The cat is out of the bag. The ultra wealthy invest much differently than you. And I have to admit, even as a financial advisor specializing in retirement planning, some of this data actually surprised me. So what do they know that we don't? In this video, I'm gonna expose how the ultra wealthy invest, what strategies you should copy, and how you can invest to have the retirement of your dreams. So let's start here by breaking down how the ultra wealthy invest. Now, these are arguably some of the smartest and most successful people in the world, and it's worth paying attention to because it may influence and shape how you think about your own investment plan for retirement. Now, earlier this year, JP Morgan released its first ever global family office report, which shows the ultra wealthy have an average allocation of 46% of their portfolio in alternative investments. And these alternative investments can be broadly categorized into six main components. As you'll see from the chart, the mean allocation to these alternatives is about 17% in private equity, 15% in real estate, 5% in venture capital, another 5% in hedge funds, and about 4% in private credit. Now I'm sure you're seeing at this point, this is wildly different than how the average investor allocates their money. And I'm guessing it's much different than how you invest. So you might be asking yourself if they're going through the trouble to invest like this, then surely they must be massively beating the market, right? But that's not necessarily the case. For example, as reported by Cambridge and Associates in their report, US private equity benchmarks for quarter two of 2020, over the previous 10 year period, the US private equity index had an average annualized return of 14.15%, which is great, but consider the simplicity and ease of investing in the S&P 500, which had an annualized return of 13.99% over the same period. And in my opinion, this performance is even less impressive when you consider the potential pitfalls. As an example, private equity investments come with substantial risks, including potential total loss of capital. Unless the entire world comes to an end, more traditional diversified public equity investments are unlikely to ever be worthless. Secondly, these alternative investments often have very high investment requirements and fees. For example, Harvard Business School reports the most common way to invest in private equity is a limited partner, which typically requires a minimum of 25 million. And a very common fee structure in things like private equity is called two and 20, which means the manager charges 2% every year and takes 20% of the profits, all of which can significantly reduce net returns. And lastly, these investments are often highly illiquid, meaning you may need to commit your money for many years, potentially 10 or more. And practically, this can be a real issue if you're retired and you need funds because you can't get out of the investment to get cash when you need it. So again, why go through all the trouble? Well, let's say you're a professional athlete like LeBron James. You're used to surrounding yourself with highly exclusive people and you live an exclusive lifestyle. You seek out the absolute best and you don't want just any investment. You want the exclusive investment that normal people don't have access to. In other words, it's a way of showing that you are in an elite class. Because let's be honest, when's the last time you've ever talked about your index funds at a dinner party? If you ever wanted to be invited back, I'm guessing you didn't bring it up. But there is another angle which most people miss, which is how these investments are used for the ultra wealthy lifestyle. Now again, earlier I mentioned that alternatives make up 46% of the ultra wealthy portfolio, but what about the other 54%? And what we can see is that they still own a large portion of their portfolio in traditional investments. About 26% of their portfolio is in public equities, 9% in cash, and about 12% in fixed income. The other 7% all just classify as other. So here's the key takeaway. About half of their portfolio is in investments that are very risky, high risk, and may not always pan out. But the other half are in more traditional investments. So imagine if you took your portfolio and you could say with confidence that you only needed half your portfolio to meet all your retirement needs, to sustain your income, provide for your family, and never worry about running out of money. Well, if that were the case, then you could have a lot of freedom to invest the other half in very risky yet potentially rewarding investments. In some ways, this is like the play money of the ultra wealthy. 
This is why it's so dangerous to try and mimic the ultra wealthy. It's because they are in an entirely different position than you and I. It's why you can't blindly mimic the strategies of not just the ultra wealthy, but any other person for that matter, because you don't know how their investments fit in within the entirety of their plan. After all, if we could somehow invest to beat the market by 2% every single year, but you didn't hit your goals and needs, did you actually win the game? So how should you invest to ensure you can have the retirement of your dreams? Because in my opinion, there is a right way and a wrong way to invest for retirement success. And I know this because my firm has the responsibility of investing our clients money to ensure they can have the retirement of their dreams. And we've been doing this now for about two decades. We've seen the market highs and we've seen the market lows when things get bad. So when you think about your investment strategies, one of the biggest mistakes I see most people make is being too conservative or too aggressive. I'll give you a real world example. I met with someone last week who is considering engaging with our firm. And she had a 1.7 million portfolio and she needs about 7,000 a month after taxes to meet her lifestyle needs. And when she sent over her statements for our team to review, we saw that of her 1.7, she had about 95% of her investments in stocks. Now she's done very well over the past 10 years or so and her performance has been great, but she was in complete danger of blowing up her retirement and being forced to go back to work. So we helped her build an investment plan coordinated with a comprehensive financial plan. The goal was to create reliable and consistent income by targeting about five years worth of annual income in cash and bonds. This way, when the market inevitably drops, we could continue to create income without selling stocks at a loss. But then when markets recovered and are doing well, we can trim that growth and replenish her cash and bonds in preparation for the next market cycle. And we did all this by using low cost diversified public investments that have been proven historically to provide the highest probability of success. You do not need exotic or complicated investments to meet your goals. What you need is the right mixture of publicly traded investments to create income regardless of market circumstances. Now, if you're curious, my team has publicly posted our investment philosophy, which you can grab for free in the description below. But I have to tell you, if you think investments alone are what will determine if you have a successful retirement or not, then you are gravely mistaken. Because if you have a lot of money in a pre-tax account like an IRA or a 401k, the IRS has laid claim to up to 40% of your account balance through taxes. And keeping less tax away from the government and more in your pocket can mean the difference between an average retirement and an amazing retirement. If you've ever wondered how to pay less tax so you can spend more in retirement, then you'll wanna watch this video right here. Once again, this is Alex Okagawa, partner and financial advisor here at One Degree Advisors. And if you're curious about how my team of certified financial planners can help you reach your goals in retirement, visit our website at onedegreeadvisors.com.